precious listeners and viewers, greetings in the name of Jesus the Christ. Thank you for joining the Methodist Church here in St. Lucia as we present to you a life-changing God message, a message of hope, a message of transformation, and a message of restoration. I am your servant, Reverend Seth Ampedo. Let us bow our heads as we go to God in prayer. Our eternal God, our Heavenly Father, the maker of heaven and earth, this morning we acknowledge you to be our God. We thank you for life. We thank you for sparing our life that today we can see. Today we can smell. We have our rightful minds. Father, all glory be unto your name. This present day, Lord, we lift all those who are sick, those who are weak, those in the hospitals. Father, we pray committing them into your hands. We pray that, Lord, you reach out to such people and bring hope to them. We pray for the doctors and the nurses who are working on them. Father, we ask for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, guidance for these doctors and the nurses of God that they will be able to do their best of God to help these, our brothers and sisters who are not feeling well. We pray, O oh God, for the peace of our nation. Our leaders are in your hands. We pray for wisdom. We pray for your guidance. We pray, O oh God, that you lead them even as they lead us, O oh God. We pray for all our young people in our nation. Continue to strengthen them. Those who are doing a lot of exploit to help our nation, we pray that you continue to lift them up. Those who have gone wayward, we pray that, Lord, you bring them home. This morning, our devotion is in your hands. We ask you, O oh God, to talk to us. We pray that, Lord, all those who are listening to my voice, wherever they are listening from, O oh God, I pray that, Lord, you reach out to them. Whatever need they may have, I ask of God, through the blood and the power of Jesus, to reach out to such people, O oh God, and give them hope. We thank you, we bless you, through your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I'm reading from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Micah 6, 8. And it reads, He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. My brothers and sisters, today if we look around us, if we look around some part of our communities, all we can see is lives that are broken with no hope, lives with no meaning for a better future for some of our young people. If we look around our communities, we see suffering, we see pain, we see lost dreams, we see hopelessness, people who are hungry. So the question confront us is that as faith community, as people, as politicians, and all of us, do we care about the broken and devastated lives around us? Do we care about the conditions some people are living in our communities? So in our text of Micah, we witness a society which is largely cut off from God because of its sins of injustice. So Micah chapter 6 verse 8, he has told you about that. What is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk hungry with your God? This is what God is saying to us as people from the test. So in the context of our test, the prophet Malachi said he saw rich dominant society, how the wealthy in Jerusalem, they were living on the backs of the poor from this community. He saw how his people were being exploited by the powerful in the society. The powerful burdened the poor with debt. So in the ancient world, land was a sacred inheritance, but the rich were unlawfully taking away the land of the poor. If they failed to do so, 
They are being maltreated. Workers were not paid their full wages. Many people lived a luxury life, which was against the law of God. These are some of the things that the prophet Marcus saw in his community. Marcus saw chaos. He saw confusion in his community. He saw wickedness in the society where the rich people, they were maltreating the poor and the vulnerable in the society. So if you look at Mark chapter 2 verse 1, it says, Alas, for those who devise wickedness and evil deeds on their beds, when the morning dawns, they perform it because it is in their power. So the leaders in Marcus' days uphold justice. So when you look at chapter 3, verse 9, Mark chapter 3, verse 9, he says, Here's this, you rulers of the house of Jacob and the chiefs of the house of Israel, who uphold justice and pervert all equity. So in this context, judges were taking bribes. There was judicial corruption. So Mark chapter 3 verse 11 says, Each rulers give judgment for a bribe. Each priest teach for a price. Each prophet give oracles for money. Yet they learn upon the Lord and say, Surely the Lord is with us. No harm shall come upon us. My brothers and sisters, the most unfortunate thing is that world doing all this, they worship in the synagogues. They make great sacrifices to God in the great temple of Solomon. So Micah asks, what does the Lord require of you? God does not require big sacrifices. So Micah gives us the requirement of God. First, to do justice. Two, to love kindness and to walk and breathe with God. So there was lack of religious penetration in the community of Marcus Day. The same thing is happening in our region and in our country today. Today there is lack of religious penetration in our homes, in our schools, our communities at large. Because of that, our television screens are filled with pictures of looting, killing, violence in various communities across our region. There is still a problem of robbery in our communities, drugs, economic exploitation, homosexuality, judicial partiality, and so many things going on in our communities. Today we see a big gap between the rich and the poor in our society. And for me, this is all because there is lack of religious penetration in our society. Our society has turned her back from God who is the source of peace. And that is why today it appears there are so many troubles in our communities because we have neglected God who is the source of peace. My brothers and sisters, the question is, what can the government do to reduce the crime rate in St. Lucia? What can the church do to help curb these social vices going on in our communities? Our text from Marca presents us with answers. These are the key to see our nation and our society going. It is all not about prayer, speaking in tongues and singing hymns. So Mark chapter 6 verse 8 provides us with answer. He says, he has told you all what are, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk hungry with your God. So first, Mark calls us, if we want peace in our communities, if we want to curb all the social vices going on, then we must love justice as people. So there should be justice in our society, in our communities, in our homes, in our workplaces. So the Hebrew word for justice refers to to right and healthy relationship between people. It means to live with a sense of fairness. Justice consists of fair treatment, 
for people. People should be treated basically the same. But do we see these things happening in our communities? God's people are to be fair in all their dealings. So justice is when the strong protect the weak rather than taking advantage of them. It is when people are hurt and not used, lifted and not put down. It is when compassion and caring replace coldness and indifference in the society. In politics, justice influences and directs the vote of the righteous. In community, justice speaks out when it sees inequality or discrimination. Justice takes a stand when others look away. My brothers and sisters, the chance of a person or a community determines how we treat the orphan, the widow, the stranger, those who are legally oppressed. Doing justice also means standing up for the poor and oppressed, for everyone whom the government powers trample over. Our families are the starting point of justice. How we treat our aged parents, our spouses, and children is a reflection of our commitment to Christ's love and justice. The second thing is that God requires us to love kindness. The Hebrew word that translates kindness refers to us closeness within community to empathize, to identify with others, to intimate and heartfelt affection. We are to treat people with the same kind of love that God has shown towards us. Jesus told his disciples that it was by their love for one another that the world would know that they were his disciples. And that is true for our society today. If we love one another, if our community will know that we are disciples of Jesus Christ, so this morning and today, we have been called to love kindness. So if we love, then we will not break into others' home to still what belongs to them. My brothers and sisters, the third thing that Maya is drawing our attention from the text is that we need to humble ourselves before God. To humble is simply to acknowledge that you are a creature and not a creator. And that you are human and not God. Too many human gods in our communities and society. That you do not, you do what God desires. I am hungry when I recognize and accept my own limitations. That I cannot do everything. That someone else is important to this morning. And today, my brothers and sisters, as a society, we have problems. The solution to our problem is found in the Word of God. And the Word of God says that we must practice justice. We must love kindness. We must walk in humility. As people in this great nation, we are called to protect life, to defend those who are poor, those who cannot defend themselves, we need to defend them. We need to seek the common good for all people in the society. This is what we can do to curb the social vices going on in our society. My brothers and sisters, we have special responsibility to protect human life and dignity and to stand with those who are poor and vulnerable in our society.